Hey, what's going on everybody? Dr. Ryan Weaver here with Apex Spinal Performance. Today's spinal workshop topic, we're gonna to be talking about food diets. This is a very, very in-depth, controversial uh, topic that depending on if you're in America, Europe, all these things vary, which we're gonna highlight a lot of these. And you may have already heard of some, um, such as hypersensitivities to red coloring and, and things like that, but we're gonna really kind of dive into this. But before we even do that, again, these spinal workshop topics we do uh, because we here at Apex Spinal Performance feel that education is one of the most important things we can do for your health and for our patients and community. So let's dive into this and in food dyes artificial colors are made from petroleum known to be a carcinogen. So I'm going to break this down because there's a a bunch of different colors, um, a lot of them, the main ones that we really hear, and 90% of food dyes in America are red 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6. And again, <clears throat> the uh, references that I'm going to go on here in terms of some ingredient list, easy ones such as Fruit Loops, um, some Kellogg's, other cereals, and Gatorades are a big one. If you've tuned in previously when we dive into caffeinated drinks, sugar drinks, and some of those you you see how much sugar's in there, but then some of the other ingredients, such as the coloring, uh, which we're going to reference here in a moment. So, red dye 40 uh, is a dark red dye used in a lot of candy, condiments, and sports drinks. Uh, again, also in cereals. And you'll see kind of an overlapping trend with some of these. Uh, yellow number five, again, it's a yellow, lemonish yellow color. Uh, and candy, soft drinks, chips popcorn, again in cereals, and then yellow number six, more of an orangish yellow color, um, and candy, sauces, baked goods, and preserved fruit. So you heard me reference er, Europe earlier. Some of the food dyes are allowed and accepted by the FDA for production in the United States, but they're actually banned in Europe. Products such as Skittles, Pop-Tarts, Gatorade, Little Debbie's are banned in European Union because they actually contain yellow 5 and yellow 6 and red 40, the aforementioned colors. The EU banned these artificial colors uh, after their scientific research indicated there could be harmful health, or harmful to your health, especially with younger children. So, one of these graphics, we'll see if we can put this up later on maybe some of our social media, but when you actually compare a Gatorade in America to Gatorade in Europe or a cereal uh, here versus in Europe, you'll see an entirely different uh, ingredient list, not only um, the coloring, but a lot of other ingredients as well. So one of the other things, may, probably the most mainstream thing that you hear of with, uh, with food dyes and coloring is hypersensitivity. So red 40, breaking each one of these downs and what they may be, may or may not be linked to, is the dye thought to be linked to allergies, migraines, mental disorders in children. Red 40 may cause hyperactivity in children and also disrupt their immune system. Yellow number five, linked to cancer and neurotoxicity in some studies known to cause hyperactivity again in children. Um, and actually in Europe, they require a warning label if this is actually in um, a product. And then yellow six has been found to cause adrenal tumors in animals. Hives and asthma symptoms, another uh, reference to yellow five, it's found in multiple studies. And then in yellow five, people who are actually more sensitive to aspirin seem to be more likely also to an allergy to yellow number five. <clears throat> in a study conducted in people with chronic hives or swelling, 52% had a allergic reaction to artificial food dyes. Uh, one that I have yet to talk about, green three, is linked to irritation of the digestive tract, bladder tumors, and tumors in lab animals as well. <clears throat> so, an international journal of occupational environmental health, um, toxicology of food dyes in 2012, referenced the three dyes, again, red 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6, have been found to can, uh, can be 
contained with benzidine or other carcinogens, and at least four dyes, so adding blue one into this, hypersensitivity reactions, and numerous microbiologic and rodent studies of yellow number five were positive for genotoxicity. What genotoxicity is, the, prop the property of a chemical agent that damages the genetic information uh, within a cell using mutations such that are lead or linked to cancer. So taking all this into consideration, there's a lot on our coloring, um, varying different ones. There are other colors I didn't even mention on there. And what I want to provoke you to do is look at your ingredient list. You're going to be really surprised by where these colorings are and what products they're in. But really in, in conclusion, um, what I want you to take from this is there is real harm in food dyes. If you are to look up, you may find some of the research that we discussed in today's workshop. However, you will also see claims that there is minimal relative risk for most people when ingesting food dyes. After all, the FDA does say that dyes are acceptable ingredients and that there is no conclusive risk to people. Certain people are more allergic to other things and some not to the same. That is the logic used with food dyes in the FDA. They acknowledge that people uh, can be harmful to certain, certain people, but not others. The example, banning pe peanut butter for some because some people may not have an allergy to that versus who do. And several studies have acknowledged that children were shown to have increased hyperactivity with food dyes while also noting that some children, in fact, are more sensitive to food dyes than others. Food dyes are used to be more attractive to the consumer. And if you think about it, they are typically brighter in color and attract more attention. They are also used mainly in processed foods, which by themselves are not a healthy option for most of ourselves, as many of them are full of sugar, referenced that earlier, preservatives before the food dyes even get involved into the conversation. Ultimately, removing processed foods from your diet as a general rule is a really good health choice that you can easily make. Whole foods that don't have any food dyes would be such as dairy and eggs, meat and poultry, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. So again, wrapping all this up, try to stay on the outside of the grocery store. If you've heard that reference before, try to eat things that if you can't grow it or kill it, don't eat it. Try to stay away from processed sugars, food dyes as best as you can to help keep down the toxins within our body. Again, I hope that you found something on here very informative and interesting. Do some of the research for yourself. Again, you may have come across the same research that we have diving into these products ourselves. So stay healthy, make healthy decisions. We have you, hope you have a blessed day and we'll see you at our next Spinal Workshop. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that Spinal Workshop. Don't forget to like the video if you learned something and be sure to share it with somebody else who may benefit from that information discussed. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you are alerted whenever we post a video.